So last year, Matthew Lesh of the Institute of Public Affairs published the Free Speech on Campus Audit for 2016, and I made a video about it back in January of this year. The key finding of that report was that of Australia's 42 universities, 79% received an overall red rating. A red rating meaning that the institution is one that actively restricts free speech on campus through policies that either clearly and substantially restrict speech or alternately has taken action that limits the diversity of ideas. And just one university received an overall green rating. And to have a green rating does not mean that the institution has a commitment to free speech, such as the Chicago principles. It just means that an institution has no policies and has taken no action that threatens campus expression. And so Matthew Lash has done the hard yards again this year and released the 2017 version. And it appears things have not improved. Not that anyone paying attention would have expected them to. So the number of universities that received a red rating in 2017 increased from 33 last year to 34, or from 79 to 81%. And the number that received a green rating remained at 1, the same university from the previous year, the University of New England. And the rest fall into the amber category, which is for institutions that maintain policies that could be interpreted to restrict speech, though the exact impact on free speech depends on how the policy is implemented or there have been unsuccessful actions taken by either university administrators or students to limit the diversity of ideas on campus. Or put another way, every university in Australia, with the exception of the University of New England, is at least attempting to restrict free speech in some way, but for some small percentage of those institutions, it's not clear if their policies and or actions are succeeding. So you might well say, well, it's not much different to last year, at least it's not getting significantly worse. But those overall ratings obscure the changes under the surface. When looking at the breakdown of the two criteria of policies and action, there is evidence of increasing censorship. The number of universities which have red ranked policies has increased from 28 to 31 since the 2016 audit, and the number of universities where there have been actions intended to limit the diversity of ideas has increased from 9 to 16 since last year. Another interesting point that was not in the last audit and something I didn't know about was the Higher Education Support Act of 2003 that requires, as a condition of receiving federal funding, a higher education provider must have a policy that upholds free intellectual inquiry in relation to learning, teaching and research. This requirement is extended to all of Australia's domestic universities. This section was first inserted by the Gillard government in 2011 with the explicit intention of safeguarding free intellectual inquiry. Furthermore, the HES framework stipulates that higher education providers display a clear commitment to free intellectual inquiry. The legislation states, the higher education provider has a clearly articulated higher education purpose that includes a commitment to and support for free intellectual inquiry in its academic endeavours. The HES framework also requires that a university's governing body take steps to develop and maintain an institutional environment in which freedom of intellectual inquiry is upheld and protected. This university's responsibility to support freedom of expression has been subsequently upheld by the university regulator. In 2017, following extensive amendments to the draft diversity and equity guidance note, the Tertiary Education Quality and Standards Agency stated, measures taken to accommodate diversity should also not contravene the pursuit of free intellectual inquiry and more generally, freedom of expression. And so how are Australian universities living up to that obligation to uphold free intellectual inquiry? Well, according to Lesh, just eight of Australia's 42 universities, 19%, have an explicit policy that protects intellectual freedom as mandated by the Higher Education Support Act 2003. Well, if it's government mandated, maybe it's time for the government to enforce that mandate. Now, what are these policies and actions that are threatening free speech on campus? University policies prohibit a wide variety of speech, including insulting and unwelcome comments, offensive language, and in some cases, sarcasm and hurt feelings. And no, that wasn't meant to be sarcastic. There have been a growing number of censorious actions at Australian universities, including violent protests against the presence of speakers 
venue cancellations for controversial speakers, students required to pay selective security fees, activist students demanding censorship of course content, university censuring academics for their speech, students instructed to not express their viewpoint, and the growing use of trigger warnings. And in this year's audit, a new measure has been used to rank universities called the hostility score. Basically, for every red action or policy, the institution receives three points and one point for each amber policy or action that seeks to limit free speech. Now, given what you know about university lunacy in Australia in the last year, which institution do you think is the worst offender? Yes, no prizes for guessing right. Of course, it's Sydney University. And it's not even close. It's Sydney University first, daylight second. Sydney University racked up a hostility score of 36. The next closest was Charles Sturt University, my old stomping ground, with 15. Now also in this year's report we have a top five worst policies and actions. Oh, you know, these are going to be good. Federation University's bullying prevention statement defines bullying to include hurting another person's feelings. Oh, Jesus. The University of Queensland's discrimination and harassment policy, Western Sydney University's bullying prevention guidelines, and Charles Sturt University's anti-racism policy forbid sarcasm. La Trobe University defines bullying to include unintentional offence and says students must not use language that causes emotional injury. So there you have it, concept creep. You've all heard a news report about a car accident in which the passengers sustained minor injuries, but pretty soon you'll be hearing about students that were involved in a conversation and sustained emotional injuries and unintentional offence. So you have to be a mind reader and anticipate anything that could be unintentionally offensive, which is basically everything to an SJW. The ANU's Discipline Rule 2017, Bond University Student Handbook and Charles Sturt University's Harassment and Bullying Prevention Policy prevents behaviour that is unwelcome. And who decides what is unwelcome? No silly question. The subjective feelings of the party being offended, of course. Monash University's social media policy forbids students in activities both related to the university and personal usage from making comments that might be construed to be offensive. Might be construed as offensive. By who? Again, we know the answer. It's the offence taker. So obviously what this does is it makes the subjective feelings of the most fragile, the most easily offended and intolerant the standard by which all speech will be judged. And of course, others will pick up on this and the result will be self-censorship for fear of being construed as offensive. Now moving on to the five worst actions of 2017, the University of Sydney Student Union attempted to block the screening of a film, The Red Pill, because it was claimed the mere showing of a video could physically threaten women on campus, which of course was absurd. Monash University has become Australia's first to formally introduce trigger warnings, which are now part of course guides. A James Cook University academic is facing serious misconduct allegations following comments about the Great Barrier Reef's health because he disagrees with the global warming alarmists. Monash University withdrew a textbook because a quiz question offended international students from China. The academic who set the question was also suspended and has since left the university. Well, that's fair enough. The Chinese will soon be our overlords, so we better get used to it. The University of Sydney has required conservative students to pay costly security fees, which are not charged for the activities of other student groups. Another story I covered recently. Now this one is from last year, so it didn't make it into the top five this year, but it is my personal favourite. The University of New South Wales Diversity Toolkit states it is inappropriate to say that Aboriginal people have lived in Australia for 40,000 years, but rather it must be said that Indigenous Australians have been here since the beginning of the dreamings. Now you're all probably hoping that this entire report is a bad dreaming, but it isn't. It's a reality here in Australia that censorship and political correctness are getting worse on university campuses, and it's not just here. This report also outlines the trends in Canada, the UK and the United States, all of which continue to get worse. In the United Kingdom, for example, the spiked free speech university rankings 2017 found 94% of British universities censor speech, up from 80% in 2015. So if you're an Australian student and you want to go to a university free of censorship and draconian politically correct speech codes, 
You can't because you can't all go to the University of New England. Most of you have no choice because our universities have been captured by the weakest, most emotionally fragile, intolerant people. And you better toe the line. Or you could start fighting against these intellectual and emotional lightweights and get involved in taking the campus back in 2018. I'll see you next time.